Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Imagine, if you will, a clan of badass Vikings that instead of living on the shores of some kind of Scandinavian style fjord, live in rooftop villages in a dense magical forest. It's a pretty cool idea. This week I built a massive hefty terrain piece to help introduce you to a very special tribe of Vikings from Loot Studios. It kind of mixed my childhood love of the Ewok villages on Endor as well as my adult love of, of like weird shamanistic Viking tribes. This thing is meant to be a little snapshot of a much larger infrastructure of intertwined catwalks and platforms and ropes and all that sort of thing. Just one little piece of a much bigger tree community. start I needed a tree and a pretty big one so I grabbed a nice thickness branch from the yard and chopped it up to a usable size. Now unfortunately the thickness of this branch that I wanted was kind of like the awkward size between too small to break out the chainsaw for and just a little bit too thick to cut in one pass with the circular saw. One main trunk would be kind of boring, so I kept my cutoff thinking that I could just somehow join them together to create that perfect Y for a tree fort foundation. I had to bust out the sander to clean up the ends since they weren't as flat as I wanted. And since it was all set up there, I was able to just like sand out this perfect cove shape in the end of my other piece. This would allow me to fit the two pieces together with a pretty nice joint. Now it didn't need to be perfect, but it would save me a lot of grief later if they at least somewhat fit together with a minimal gap. And since these were big hunks of hardwood, the best way to join them together was simply by driving a couple big deck screws into them. This would make it plenty strong, which I already knew would be important on such a hefty build. To get that flat cut, you know, sitting level, I used the trick that a lot of people use when making like coffee tables out of driftwood or tree stumps. I flipped it upside down so that the top would be sitting flat on the table and then marked up a level line around the base so that I could take it outside and cut it again at the right angle. And while I was out there, I also cut and sanded a base out of quarter inch MDF. This tree trunk was really heavy and would easily topple over, uh, especially with that big overhang. So I attached it to the base close to one end, which would leave a, you know, plenty of surface area to act as a counterbalance and keep the build nice and steady. And again, just a big old deck screw was the way to go. And now it just needed an actual platform. To make my life a little bit easier, I started with some MDF circular discs that I got from the dollar store and spent a lot of time hemming and hawing about how I wanted it to be placed. I didn't just want like a big perfect circle on top. I wanted it a little bit offset. I wanted it to look kind of natural. So I drew out where the tree trunk would land, stared at it some more, and eventually laid out a shape that I would cut out with a jigsaw. The cutouts would allow me to place the platform lower on the trunk and you know, just slide it down in place. And it would make it feel more like it was built around a continuous tree trunk rather than just like sitting on top of a felled one. Before that platform was in the way, I busted out my PL Premium Construction Adhesive, which I used as a gap filler. It, it works great for this. The stuff is really, really strong. And, and once it was dried, it would likely render those screws unnecessary and it would never crack. One thing to keep in mind though, when working with this sort of adhesive is that it's a nightmare to clean off anything and basically impossible to get off skin. So you can shape it with your fingers, but you really wanna be wearing gloves when you're doing this. And because this glue reacts with water, using a wet finger to work it into shape will actually help kick it even quicker. And while the PL would be plenty strong enough to hold that platform once dried, I needed it to actually be secure and stay in one spot so I could keep working. So for this, I just used some temporary screws to tack it in place. You know, it sure was refreshing working with large chunks of actual wood that I could just drive screws into when I needed. So it's a nice break from, you know, more flimsy crafty material. To actually decorate the platform, I used a ton of coffee stir sticks that I carved up and textured to give them rougher edges. Now that's a very time consuming task that I don't really enjoy doing, but since I had, you know, kind of been waiting for glue to dry, I didn't really have anything better to do. Like it definitely would have looked a lot better if there wasn't a solid MDF backing piece under these so that you could leave some gaps and see through it, but it would be far too complicated to build a frame to work on for this platform and placing 
getting the sticks close together is really a worthwhile trade-off to you know free up some time to work on the rest of the project and ensure that this thing isn't gonna fall apart. I hid the flat base as best I could by overhanging the stir sticks quite a bit so you don't really see it unless you're actually like looking up underneath it. At this point, I was really wishing that the center trunk was longer, a lot longer. I wanted it to imply that it kept going up into a much larger tree and wasn't just some cut flat platform on the structure. I wanted the shelter to be in a tree and not on a tree, possibly one of many in a very large tree. So I went outside to find my cutoff to put it back on, but I realized that it had been the piece that I attached on the side to make that Y. Thankfully, I found the cutoff from the other end and it fit well enough for me to fake it. It would leave a small little gap seam that would need hiding, but that would be really easy to do later with some texture paste to just kind of blend it in with the bark. I spent a really long time contemplating what to add to the structure. I, I knew I wanted more playable area and, and layers to make it all look more dense, uh, but it was a real struggle to think about where I wanted those things, you know, to balance looking cool and still being able to get big hands into it to move around delicate miniatures. At some point, I decided on a couple runway platforms higher up in the tree. I was able to take advantage of that side branch to have one of these, you know, ramps rest on, but I did have to take it outside yet again hit it with a palm sander to get it nice and flat so that my beams could rest on it. I also got lucky that the other ends could get a tiny bit of support from that seam where I joined those two big branches together. This meant I could go straight into assembling the planks without having to wait for the glue on the beams to dry or stiffen up. And I said before, I really don't like prepping wood sticks for crafting, but I absolutely love snapping them and putting them in place. This step has a lot of instant gratification and just breaking the pieces to the length you need is the easiest way to cut them, but it also gives really great looking rough ends. Of course, this walkway needed a ladder. And since I knew I, you know, I'd want a second walkway higher up, I made the ladder nice and tall. Now, if there's one thing you can take away from this video that's like a really useful tip, this is probably it. If you want to construct something like a ladder, railing, or bridge, whatever, double-sided tape is your friend. Put some down on your worktop and place your beams spaced evenly apart, exactly as you want them to be. Then you can apply your glue and your planking freely without worrying about things moving around or going out of whack. With that ladder and a second walkway all made up, I was ready to rock. The ladder could just be glued into place, but the other walkway needed something a lot more secure. Again, the great thing about working off a big chunk of wood is that you can drill into it. I had left the beams on this plank, you know, kind of extra long on one end. This way I could just insert them right into the main structure in some bored out holes, put in a bit of glue and it was perfect. This will absolutely never break off. And there's something immensely satisfying about having it like project out like that, but still be really solid and secure. Still, Empty platforms are kind of boring. I wanted to add a living space. This would do more than just, you know, build another bit of interest. It would also help hide that joint on the back of the trunk, leaving less to hide later with paste. The idea of a kind of lean-to or half teepee really appealed to me here, and it was pretty straightforward to, you know, just make some support beams, cut them at the proper angles, and glue them in place. This whole thing was really starting to come together in a wonderful way and was exceeding my initial expectations for the build. I needed to decorate the base and part of me wanted to just paint it plain black so that it would just like disappear and imply that this was located much higher off the ground. But since I had gotten construction adhesive all over it, you know, before coming to this conclusion, it made more practical sense to just decorate it like ground. I also could have made another wood platform here to maintain the illusion of height, but in the end, I opted for the ground cover, you know, as it would really make the most sense when actually being used. I gave it a good rough covering of sculpt mold to make it, you know, not so flat and to provide a great forest floor texture. But something fell off about this fortification being so close to the ground and, you know, easily accessible by foes. To make it seem more protected, I cut a bunch of various sized dowels and toothpicks into spikes and just embedded them all over the ground. This made the whole piece a bit more intimidating looking for sure. And while that dries, it's a great time to formally introduce you to the sponsor and inspiration for this build. Loot Studios, one of my favorite model companies, is launching Journey to Valhalla, a fantasy Viking setting in the world of Klaegard. 
This release will consist of over 75 freaking miniatures divided into three tribes, each with their own unique visual identity. Now, starting August 16th, all three tribes will be available for purchase in pre-supported 32 millimeter and 75 millimeter formats, either individually or as a full set of all the tribes. This is a one-time purchase with special early bird pricing. And if you subscribe with the link I have listed below, you'll actually also get a free head splitter miniature and extra information before anybody else. Now I'm proud to be able to exclusively introduce you to the Sverting Forest Tribe. Believed to be savages by the other tribes, the Sverting people are attuned to nature. They can bend nature to their needs using innate magical powers. Some who seek them out will return with natural gifts, some will never return at all. Perhaps they remained with the clan to live harmoniously in the forest habitat. Or perhaps not. Now this tribe will do whatever it takes to protect their borders from encroaching humans set on depleting their world of its natural gifts for unnatural gain. If you want to get your hands on these awesome miniatures along with those other tribes, which I'm sure also very cool, go subscribe to the link I've got down in the video description below. All right, all right. Uh, up next was making that forest floor more uh, foresty. I grabbed my bin of natural materials and got to gluing. Some dry lichen for bushes and a whole whack load of dried tea leaves for general vegetation. Now, I really like the way that tea flocking looks on sculpt mold for jungle and forest floor specifically. It also smells really nice while you're working with it. When applying it, I like to use Luke's Geek Gaming Fast Drying Adhesive because it's fast but mostly because it's like the damn stickiest, tackiest forever glue I've come across. Stuff like never stops being sticky. This is another one of those adhesives that you don't wanna get on anything other than your project or it will be tacky forever. The tea also absorbs liquids really well, so it's easy to soak it with water or alcohol and then a bunch of watered down glue. This creates a really strong, but pretty damned hard surface once dry. And then I uh, got to the part of the project where I got really wrapped up in the moment and completely forgot my plan of painting it all at this stage before moving on to some of the other details, like the animal hide for the shelter. I've never done this before, but I used strips of ripped up brown construction paper soaked in watered down PVA glue to create the layers of leather hide. I was careful to rip the strips in such a way that they had, you know, rough edges that were, you know, really thin and not straight and made sure not to make any singular really large pieces. I wanted it to look like it was made from the skin of a bunch of creatures that would be in scale with the characters. Now, of course, make believe worlds could have creatures of any size, but keeping them somewhat reasonable helps make everything just look more right. The other thing that made it look like a little bit more like animal hide was letting that glue really soak into the paper to the point where, you know, I could rub it and it would sort of burr up in a bit of a texture. I was really surprised just how well this whole process worked. You know, I thought it would be far more fiddly, but the soaked paper formed uh, onto the framing and stuck to it like really well. It was tacky enough to just stay in place and everything just stayed together. It was awesome. And it was actually really fun to do and way better than the other methods uh, using things like paper towel, toilet paper, or tissue paper that I've done in the past. I'm gonna absolutely be returning to this technique in the future. In fact, I kind of want to build some stuff just so I can do it because like I said, it was fun. And it worked so well that I decided to use it to make a bit of a bearskin rug and put on the platform. In the end, this didn't work out quite as well as the actual tent, but it let me know the limits of this technique moving forward. Now, sometimes when you add to a project, it, uh, it puts it in a position where suddenly it needs even more detail to look right. Like it crosses this threshold of just a piece of terrain implying what it is into something really representing it clearly. This is one of those times. So I continued on by adding another support branch and a whole bunch of rope rigging. Now, working with scale ropes has been something I've struggled with basically every time I've ever done it. It's, it's always awkward, but I had just picked up this jewelry string uh, that was the perfect size and decided to give it a go. The reason it worked so well was that I was able to soak the string in that same watered down glue from before and just start running it all over the project. This build had so many different levels and protrusions and little things to wrap the string around that it allowed me to just like kind of go with one continuous long string and keep it really tight running from place to place. It, it wasn't fiddly. And because it was easy, it was fun. And because 
because it was fun, you know, I put a, lo a lot more time into doing it. This had to be the highlight of the build for me, and I'm excited to do it again sometime knowing, you know, how to do it in a far less annoying way now. The mistake I made though was doing this and like the paper before paint. They both looked really good just as is. Like that, that paper soaked in the glue dried a fantastic color with a lot of tonal like variants in it. And the rope just needed a little bit of wash. And I could have just mixed in some tinting into the glue to do that. But at this point, you know, I had to paint the whole thing despite, you know, some of it looking good unpainted because there was just so much stuff mixed in that needed that painting. And I went with a simple rattle can black primer with a white highlight. This would allow me to airbrush the majority of the color. Because this thing is so big with a ton of nooks and crannies and different textures, the idea of painting it with a brush was about as appealing as painting my eyeball with a paintbrush. So I turned to one of my favorite painting methods of just airbrushing on a bunch of thin translucent inks. Since so much of this would be earth tones, it didn't really require a lot of different colors. My main focus was getting the hewn, you know, uh, framed lumber looking different than the tree trunk, you know, by making sure it was a little bit more yellowish in tone. I also tried to do some generic, but like original and unique Viking style runes on some bits of draped leather uh, that I had hung from one of the bridges, but I was having a really bad handshake day and this project uh, was full of spiky ass bits all over the place. And there was like nowhere to put my hand to rest it and balance it. So it didn't turn out too great. Uh, it's fine. It's meant to look like tribal members painted it on probably with crude tools or their hands anyway. So it didn't need to look too precise. After that, to really make this uh, paint job come together, I went with a dark brown and a green oil wash. Because the inks already created so much variety of tones across the piece, the washes were more just to bring it all together, get in all the nooks and crannies, make some shadows, and it really just creates a bit of filtered color to make things look less airbrushed. And since it's an oil wash, you know, that meant that I could remove excess from the surfaces of the wood planks to make them contrast even more with the rest of the build. I also tried to clean up the runes a bit uh, with a Sharpie, but since my hands were still just as shaky and the build just as awkward and spiky, uh, it, it, it didn't make much of a difference. I couldn't even try to outline them nicely. I just did kind of an overlapping second line that sort of made it look more rustic and good enough. But here it is, the finished Viking treehouse, and I love it. It's so damn cool. It, it was a pleasure to build, and I even managed to find a few new ideas and techniques on it that I'm gonna for sure use again. I can't express how pumped I am about the rope rigging and the leathers especially. Seriously, that brown construction paper is an absolute MVP, and I love it. It was easy to do, it looks great. It's really durable and stiff, oh, it's amazing. This build is gonna fit so well with the models from Loot and one of my homebrew worlds that I might be returning to soon. Uh, so it is now on my short list of favorite builds. I also might have to bust out some Ewoks at some point to play with this thing. Seriously, I, I can't get over how nice this leather looks and the rope. But the leather especially, it's fucking awesome. I'm really happy. And I'm also happy with the way I did these, you know, platforms. Standalone, they kind of make sense. They're just like little lookout points, you know, made for the horn to sound the alarm. But they can, in game if I want, also imply that, you know, they continue onwards to other platforms in this village. Same, same with these branches, you know, they continue out into, you know, this much bigger village. It wasn't that hard to make. Uh, it was kind of involved uh, and took a fair bit of time, but nothing was really difficult. It'd be really cool to run a game, uh, especially like a skirmish game or, or maybe like a Star Wars game where there's just a full table of these all set up and connected together. If anybody does that, uh, you let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found something useful and new from it. If you did hit the like button, let me know in the comments section below. Of course, if you wanna pick up any tools or supplies for your own hobby needs, you're wondering what something I used was, you know, you just want some more information on the stuff I use, check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page where I list all the stuff I use and buying through those links helps fund the production of these videos. However, the best way to help fund the production of these videos and keep this channel going strong is uh, by supporting the channel on Patreon. It really means a lot. It's crucial to the success of this channel and I wouldn't be here without the support of everyone there. So thank you so much. And uh, if you're not a member, I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. 
best thing about ladders like this is that you can insert the bases into them and the minis can just uh, stay on the ladders. That's a free tip.